All right, guys, this video is going to be a breakdown of how to solve one of these amount of substance titration questions. OK, get out your notebooks and have a go. All right. You also have your periodic table to decide if you need it. I would strongly advise get into the habit of using the insert from your specific exam board, AQA, OCR, edX, or whatever that may be. Just go to their website, find the insert, get comfortable with it so you can use it in your real exam. All right. So let's jump into this. Let's read through the question. So we've got Charlotte, good old Charlotte. She has a cheeky. 5.6 gram sample of ethanoic acid, but it's contaminated with sodium ethanoate. She dissolves the sample in distilled water and then makes up the volume to 200 centimeters cubed. She then takes a sample of this and that sample has a volume of 25 centimeters cubed and titrates them with sodium hydroxide solution. Okay, And that concentration of the sodium hydroxide is 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed. And then we're given a nice data table right here. Very typical thing to be given in your exam, a data table. Sometimes you'll have to fill it in, but in this case, they just want us to calculate the mean theta. A really easy year 12 question, all right? Mean theta, what does this mean? Just means average theta. What do you need to do? You just need to look for the concordant results. Concordant is within 0 0.1 centimeters cubed of one another, okay? So, and that is always going to be the teeter, okay? Ignore the final, ignore the initial volume for this case. It's always going to be the teeter that has to be concordant. Ignore the rough. So we're looking at the three different trials that she ran this titration, okay? So if we're looking for concordant, they have to be within 0.1 of each other. What is that going to be? So we can use this one. Maybe. Can we use this one? Maybe. Can we use this one? Maybe. We can only use this and this scrap number two, okay? So what you would do is you just do your average, right? So you add together and then divide by the total um, number of things that you're adding together. In this case, it's two. So our mean theta is just going to be 20.25 plus 20.3 divided by two. Okay. Let's get a calculator up. 20.25 plus 20.3. And that is divided by two. That gives us an answer of 20.275. Okay, 20.275. Is that going to be our final answer? How many significant figures or decimal places are given in our data table? We've got two decimal places in every situation. So I'm going to give my final answer to two decimal places to match this data table right here. So we're going to have 20.28. That is our answer. Obviously, that's in centimeters cubed, but you don't need to show the units to get the mark here. Okay, 20.28. So that's a super easy one mark out of the way. Let's move on to the more complicated titration stage of this experiment. All right. So we need to calculate the percentage by mass all right, of sodium ethanoate. So this impurity, this contaminant in this sample. Okay. So if you're not sure what to do, you're always going to want to carry these out in two stages, right? Stage one is going to be the actual titration, okay? So you do step one is you work out everything that's happening here within that reaction between the acid and the base, whatever's going on here. And then what you do is you backtrack it to step two, which is the original sample. And that is going to be where the volume is larger, okay? So you have a larger original sample. And then you take a normally 25 centimeter cube sample of that and titrate it. Okay. Okay. So let's do that. First point I'm going to say here, broken record at this point, guys, what do we start with? What is our step one going to be in any amount of substance calculation? This also carries over mostly to acids and bases as well. What is step one going to be? Hopefully you know what this is. Start with the moles. Right, start with the moles. The moles tells you the amount of things that are reacting. And from there, we can use our two mole equations to work out other variables. Okay. So what we're going to use is our mole equations, n equals and n equals. What are these two guys going to be? We've got n equals involving solutions, Cv, and involving mass, m over mr. All right. So what we can do is we can look into our question and look what variables have been given to us. Okay. So we've got the mean theta that we calculated. So this is the volume of sodium hydroxide. Okay. Because we've got 25 centimeter cubed of this contaminated acid that we're reacting. This ethanoic acid is contaminated with this. The volume that we're concerned with of our sodium hydroxide is going to be our theta. 
All right, so we know that's 20.28 done. We also know what the concentration is, 0 0.35 that's given to us. So if you wanna use one of these equations, you have to know two of the three variables. We have both of these so we can work out the moles, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do for step one. I'm gonna make another note here for you guys, just so it's crystal, crystal clear. This is for the 25 centimeter cube titration. Okay, don't, you, you can do this in your actual response. So it's laid out clearly for the examiner, but this is just for me to explain it to you. Okay, so we've got our moles of our sodium hydroxide. And this is simply gonna be our concentration, which is I believe 0 0.35, yep, 0 0.35, multiplied by our volume, which was 20.28. All right, now, centimeters cubed is the units for the apparatus that we use in chemistry for the most part, okay? Conical flask, burettes, whatever it may be, gonna be centimeters cubed. We don't want that, okay? The reason being is that our concentration is moles per what? Does that look like centimeters to you? No, it's not, it's decimeters cubed, okay? So because it's decimeter cubed, that's the volume unit of this concentration. So what you're gonna have to do is convert centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed. It's basic year 12, even GCSE stuff, all right? So how you convert that is you just divide by a thousand, okay? Alternatively, the way I like to remember it is times 10 to the minus three, all right? That's just how I like to remember it. If you find it easy to do divide by a thousand, do that, all right? So that's what we're gonna do. Let's put that in our calculator. Let's do this. So we got 0 0.35 multiplied by, bracket that bad boy up, 20 point, whoops, 20.28 times 10 to the minus three, close bracket. All right, and that gives us 7.098 times 10 to the minus three. And that is mole. Okay, done, that is the moles of the sodium hydroxide. Okay, what do we have to do next? How does that help us? Like, we've worked out the moles of sodium hydroxide, what would you do, like, what does that help us with? If you know what the equation is for the titration and any reaction that's taking place, you can look at step two, which would be mole ratios. Okay, all amount of substance uh, calculation, step one, mole, step two, mole ratios, for the most part. Okay, so that's exactly what we're gonna do here. Even if you're a bit rocky with your equations, guys, chemical equations, and you don't know what the equation looks like when you react the ethanoic acid with the sodium hydroxide, just remember, acid plus base equals salt plus water. It makes it super easy, right? So let's do this in a yellow. We've got our acid, what is our acid gonna be? Ethanoic acid, okay, plus sodium hydroxide. That is our base. Now, what is this gonna produce? It's gonna produce our salt, okay? In the instance of our salt, it's like this, right? This is our ethanoate ion. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this cation onto here and replace it with the hydrogen to produce water. So what this becomes is just CH3COO, then we've got our Na on the end, and that is our salt, plus H2O, okay? So what we're gonna do here is you would carry out this equation in like in the exam, right? You say, okay, acid plus base gives salt plus water. Are the moles and is everything balanced? Okay, there's no charges here, so we don't have to worry about charges. How many NAs? One. How many NAs? One. Okay, how many CH3Qs? One. How many CH3Qs? One. Hs, we've got one, four, five, two, five, done. It's balanced, okay? What does this balanced equation tell us? It tells us that the mole ratios are essentially one to one to one to one. Okay, what does that mean? It means that when this reaction is carried out to completion, this amount, moles, of sodium hydroxide reacts with exactly the same amount of the acid, okay? So we can say then, one to one mole ratio, therefore, the moles of the ethanoic acid also equals this, okay? 7.098 times 10 to the minus three. Done, okay? And this is the that what actually occurred in the conical flask for the titration, okay? This would be step one that I mentioned earlier. So next, we just gotta work out what is going on in step two, okay? So all you have to do here is look at the difference in the volume, okay? And then multiply the moles back up accordingly, okay? So what do I mean by that? So in our 25 centimeter cubed, we had this amount of the acid and that same amount of the base, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide it by 25, 
in order to get it down to one centimeter cubed, okay? If we divide that by 25, it gets it down to one centimeter cubed. And then I'm gonna times it by 200 to get it back up to here, okay? In other words, times 200 over 25, okay, as a fraction. 200 divided by 25 is eight, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say the moles of the ethanoic acid, don't know where that E came from, ethanoic acid in 200 centimeter cubed equals the moles divided by 25 to get it down to one, and then we're timesing it by 200 to get it up to the original volume of that flask, okay? In other words, you can times it by eight, which is a shortcut I'm gonna use in my calculator. All right, so let's do that. 7.098 times 10 to the minus three times eight, okay? That gives us 0 0.056784. done and that is moles okay so that is all you have to do in these back titrations okay is you have to work out step one what is the amounts that are within the actual titration step two what is the amounts that are within the original flask and you just multiply out by however the difference in the volume is okay just like i did here all right so is that our answer what's going on here what did the question ask for percentage by mass okay so what we have to do for percentage by mass is we have to work out the mass of the ethanoic acid, and we have to work out the mass of the impurity, okay? Because that's what they've asked us for. Percentage by mass of the sodium ethanoate, which is the impurity, the contaminant, okay? So I'm just gonna use my Mohr equation to work out what the mass is, okay? So if we have N equals MR, this is literally what I'd be thinking in the exam, okay? N equals MR, let's rearrange this to make mass the subject, times both sides by MR to get rid of it on this side, all right? Mass equals N times MR, okay? So obviously I have this variable, I know what the moles are, but I don't know what the MR of the eth ethanoic acid is, but it's easy. I can calculate it from the periodic table right here. Okay. Or I can just remember it because I remember that carbon is 12, oxygen is 16. Okay. So I can say down here, MR of ethanoic acid equals, we got carbon, which is 12 plus hydrogen one times three. So that's three plus 12 plus 16, 16 is 32, plus one, okay? I'm gonna do this in my head, 24 plus three is 27, 28, eight plus two is 30, so that gives us 60, okay? So our MR right here is 60 grams per mole. All right, cool, so we worked out the MR, we now have this variable right here that we had a question mark on previously, rub that out. So we can just carry out this equation right here in your calculator. So the mass, let's write the actual specific species that we're looking at, the ethanoic acid equals our moles of the 200 centimeter cubed, which is 0 0.056784 multiplied by 60. And that is gonna give us our mass. So let's do that in the calculator. 0 0.056784 times 60 equals 3.40704. Okay, and that is grams, that is our mass. Now, is this our final answer? No, we've got the mass. We need percentage by mass, okay? So, if we have total mass, all right, you ever need to know what, what the mass of something is and you have zero information about it. We have nothing to go on for the sodium methanoate here, okay? All that we have is the total mass of the sample, which is 5.6. And we just calculated the mass of the Thing that's in the sample or one of the two things that's in the sample ethanoic acid okay so if total mass is mass of the a for example which is the ethanoic acid plus mass of b we know what mass of a is we can rearrange and we know what the total mass is we can rearrange this to make mass of b the subject okay obviously in your exam you can do this easier by just understanding the principles of remainders but for the purposes of explaining this i'm going to do this so then mass of B equals the total mass. Then we have to minus the mass of A, okay? Minus mass of A, all right? And that's what I'm gonna do right here. We know what the total mass is, 5.6 grams. Let's do that right here, 5.6, easy. Minus the mass of A, which we just calculated, 3.0704, okay? 
put that in your calculator. Let's do this. 5.6 minus 3.40704. Did I do that right? Yep, equals 2.19296. 2.19296 grams, okay? This is the mass of our sodium ethanoate, okay, which is which is our impurity. Now, all we have to do to work out our percentage is do the percentage of, that we're looking for as the numerator divided by the total mass as the denominator multiplied by 100. You multiply it by 100 because it's a percentage, all right? So therefore, percentage purity equals the mass of the sodium ethanoate, 2.19296, divided by the total mass, 5.6, times 100. All right, let's move that down out of the way because that's a different question. And that equals, if we put that in our calculator, what we got going on? 2.19296. Over 5.6 multiplied by 100. And that gives us an answer of 39.16%. Okay, now we've got to think to ourselves how many numbers of significant figures should we be given our answer to? Okay, the lowest number of significant figures given to us in the question is what you want to give your final answer to. Okay, so even though all of these are like two decimal places, four sig figs, that is a high higher level of accuracy as the lowest value given. So how many sig figs is this one, right? This is three. How many is this? This is three. How many is this? This is three. How many is this? This is three. These are all four, but we're going to go with our lowest three. Okay. So our final answer right here, let's do it in nice pink, is going to be a 39.2%. Easy. That is our final answer.